All right, thanks so much, guys. Yeah, Duro Clean joining us today to talk a little bit about the ESG space and the uh, clean energy space in the sense that we're taking uh, plastics and transforming them into renewable oils and renewable fuels along with uh, products in this space. Uh, Offer Vickis is the director and uh, CEO of the company and joins us today to tell us a little bit more about the company. Uh, it's great to have you, Offer. Uh, let's jump right into things here. Tell us where this concept came from because it's an interesting space right now, getting a lot of attention. Uh, tell us about a Duro Clean. Oh, we, we've been considering. Thank you for having me. Hello. We've been conceiving, uh, we conceived about uh, 10 years ago in 2011, and we've been uh, under the radar working on this technology for ever since uh, recently got public. We felt it's about time to uh, uh, show the audience what is it that we're doing. I mean, they deserve to know that there is uh, other uh, alternative to combat plastic waste. We feel definitely uh, as part of this uh, force that can add more value uh, when you're talking about uh, combating waste plastic all around us. I mean, the current solutions that you can see are somewhat limited, and I think we're breaking this uh, this circular in a very interesting way. Yeah, so a, a service that is, is greatly needed. I mean, everyone's seen, you know, the pictures of uh, the oceans uh, with the floating plastic is terrible, obviously, and, and needs to be corrected. Uh, let's talk about the process here. So plastic upcycling, tell us exactly what that means and what the company is uh, working towards and the benefits that we can see from this. Right, well, plastic upcycling, for us, it's a, it's a chemical conversion that happens in a, at a very, very low temperature. And uh, it, it happens with a catalyst and, and, and some source of, uh, we call it the glycerol uh, hydrogen equivalent, which has come from some kind of a renewable for, uh, source. Now, the benefit of it is that because you're working in a small temperature and because you're somewhat independent, you don't need the hydrogen gas by way of example. Uh, what happened is that there is benefit uh, in, the, in the technology that enable you to uh, operate in a small uh, scale operation. And that gives you a lot of flexibility. Actually, it gives you some kind of a, uh, a way to reimagine again, how would you like to combat this uh, uh, by way of example, you just uh, uh, maybe you could put a smaller uh, operation unit closer to the waste resources. So now you don't need to transport it. Um, you sometimes can create uh, uh, more value uh, for the locals that are working around it uh, in many ways. And if you want to enter into a circular or large centralized location, then you're talking about a very efficient system that can step up and, and uh, process anything from a single stream. And within time, we're very early up to a complex mixture of plastics. So the second of three verticals that the uh, company works on is going to focus on bitumen and renewables. Tell us exactly uh, what we're referring to here first off and how is this different from uh, what the company is doing with the plastic? Um, it, it's actually platform technology. And so it, it's almost the same, believe it or not. We see things through the chemistry and, and uh, there, there's a lot of similarities. In fact, when we're operating a bitumen, this is where we started, uh, there are lessons learned towards the renewable, and when we're operating on the renewable, there are lessons learned towards the bitumen. And I'll give an example. We use uh, uh, the metals in the bitumen as the catalyst, which is considered to be a very uh, um, a source of, of, to, of creating um, or hurting the value of the bitumen. But then we only have to add some kind of a bio-based material to create this uh, chemistry that we want. And by that, we are improving uh, not just the value of, of this unconventional crew that is, uh, is um, unfortunately, in, in today's market, it's growing because of all kinds of reasons. Uh, energy in the world, demand for energy in the world is increasing, and there is uh, definitely there is increase in, in, in the usage of unconventional crude. But we're also saving uh, money to the producer that has to spend a lot of money on the blending side. And that gives him uh, maybe a greener, a operation that increases the value of the crude, saves a little bit of the operation, and gives him flexibility when he's working in this vast market because the big guys has alternative and the smaller guys has less alternative. We represent, uh, we want of course to work with the bigger guys, but we also represent an opportunity for the smaller guys in this field uh, to uh, uh, make a greener process. So the company has seven patents currently uh, for water-based technologies in this space. Uh, it's been featured in Forbes.com uh, as part of a uh, plastic pollution solution uh, article on Forbes. So tell us a little bit about what we can expect here as far as, 
you know, maybe development in this space, further development, and what does the company have planned going forward? Yeah, it, it, it was a bit of a core walk around because it was so novel and new, nobody knew about it. And we have to uh, take steps in order to uh, uh, recognize ourselves, I guess. And the Forbes uh, suggest for me, uh, for us, actually two steps, uh, two, two items, I guess. Uh, the first one, us coming from the lab and moving forward and, and actually being able to show that we are taking steps towards commercialization. That was uh, maybe the first benefit. And uh, uh, there was a recognition, professional recognition that there is a source out there that is an alternative uh, a way to work around the uh, plastic waste. Uh, the second was uh, more related to the ESG activity. So if we could uh, imagine uh, uh, an operation that currently all the plastic waste end up in the in the waste uh, in the landfill, and uh, if we are small and tiny and nibble and, and have some flexibility, how about uh, avoiding this waste of getting into the live stream? Because we can do now, we see opportunities to work with, with uh, a B2B uh, organization where we're just collecting the, the, the plastic straight from, uh, from a customer and just treating it before it even ends up in the waste stream. And that's a different business model. So that type of flexibility is uh, now translated into some kind of a pilots that we are looking forward uh, to in commission over the next uh, few years. And that's what the public is, is, is going to see from us. It's, it's a fascinating topic. And I think one that, uh, you know, a lot of people may need to educate themselves on further uh, going forward. AduroCleanTech.com, guys, for more information on the work that AduroClean is currently doing. ACT is the ticker. It's listed here in Toronto primarily on the uh, CSE. Offer Vickis, CEO and uh, Director of AduroClean. Uh, a fascinating topic. Uh, thanks for doing this today. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. There we go, guys. AduroClean Technologies.